Revenge of the Fallen Devastator has always been somewhat of a weird character in the grand scheme of things. He shares no resemblance to the Generation 1 counterpart, however specifically amongst movie fans he's a much beloved character. Didn't really have any character, but he is in a sense. I did have plenty of background of the Generation 1 version before going into Revenge of the Fallen because the internet existed and I was able to watch the G1 episodes. But even then, and even considering how much of a letdown the movie was overall, especially Devastator's character, I was still enthralled with the scene when I saw it on the big screen, with him stomping along and sucking up the ground beneath his feet. Yeah, it even made me feel some tension, despite the fact that it was only skids and mud flap getting mauled in the process. Unfortunately, when the toy came out, it was pretty terrible. There were no robot modes, there was no articulation, it had very little paint, it wasn't screen accurate, it wasn't even to scale with anything, it was a pretty bad toy. And as a kid, I was stupid enough to ask for that one instead of the toy that we're discussing today. Of course, nowadays, with the advent of Studio Series, we're of course able to get a proper Devastator, or we will, next year. By the way, I totally called it that they'd have a combining Devastator when they leaked Hightower on Amazon a few months ago. Regardless, back in the day, the only way to have a good Devastator toy was at the Legend scale. It was released in a box set, featuring seven of the however many combined pieces that were actually in the movie. The number often varies, it's very hard to keep track of everything. He is reminiscent of the old Micromaster combiners back in Generation 1 and their subsequent re-releases in Robots in Disguise 2001, but this combiner is notable in the fact that it is the first example of a Legends combiner, from both Hasbro and third party inclusive. Without old Granddaddy Devastator here, we wouldn't have such gems such as the Iron Factory, Bruticus and DJD combiner, and the somewhat shaky DX9 Hulky. Greetings Cybertronians, I'm Dr. Lockdown, and today's diagnosis pertains to Revenge of the Fallen Legends Class Devastator, specifically the Takara re-release of the Generation 1 colours. Can I just say that even nowadays, the concept of a Legion scale combiner is utterly mental. So far, Hasbro's only given us two attempts at it. Three if you count the Optimus combination, and even when you go to a larger, more modern Legion scale, Hasbro's only given us a set of Duocons, and Third Party has currently only given us two, with two more on the way. Possibly three? I haven't heard anything about DX9 War and Pocket Predator King since the review I put out on Hulky, so we'll have to see if that thing comes to fruition anytime soon. Personally, I wouldn't mind if it didn't. Point is, this right here is a novel concept that's still being developed to this day, and Devastator here is actually the first outing. Thing is, last time I reviewed a Legends Combiner on the channel, which coincidentally also was a Devastator, let's just say the results weren't great. So can a toy that's at least half a decade older with only a fifth of the budget hold its own? I mean, at the very least, it's gotta be better than the Supreme version. Yikes, that's gotta be the second worst Christmas present I ever got. The first was a Doctor Who DS game, which was pretty much a Professor Layton knockoff. To be honest though, I've always preferred the more... <sighs> DIY aesthetic of its early years. Before I start, I should probably mention that this is the Takara release of the G1 Colors version. I never owned this toy as a kid, and I jumped at the chance when I saw it online at a reasonable price. That doesn't really matter for Long Haul though, as he remains green as ever. Long Haul obviously transforms into a dump truck, and as far as Legion alt modes go, this one's pretty serviceable. I mean, during the Legion Marathon I've partaken this month, we've come across some pretty shoddy alt modes already, so it's nice to see something that has to combine turn out this good. For Takara release, the paint apps are still minimal, but they convey the point well enough. I would have liked a little more, but on a toy this small, it's not terrible. One thing that baffles me is that somehow he ends up looking way better than the non-combining version. At the time, Hasbro also released a few separate constructor cons that didn't combine, which honestly makes no sense in hindsight. But what makes even less sense is how messy the standalone one looks in comparison. Screws on the top, a messy undercarriage, and visible head syndrome when the combining one has a clean underside. Was this designed by one of those shitty radicons whom you're not allowed to criticize? Regardless, Long Haul is already generating good towards this combiner in his alt mode. The only gripe I have is that the bed isn't quite deep enough. I can forgive it though, given how he transforms. Continuing on with the legs, Rampage's alt mode is also fairly decent. Is that grammatically correct? Can you say fairly decent? Anyway, again, the alt mode here is pretty good. Unfortunately, it remains static when the scoop is concerned thanks to the transformation, and this time it's a little less forgivable as they could have re-engineered it. But even then, there's a lot to like here. I like how they've painted the treads at the bottom so it actually looks like they could function, even if he uses fake wheels. I mean, sure, this grey block here can be unsightly, but it's not completely terrible. The canopy section can look a little oversized at times, but I don't particularly hate this design choice. Sure, it's primarily to facilitate the transformation, but it gives them a sort of gobot-y feel. As a matter of fact, these guys' odd transformations and the weird robot modes are giving me gobot vibes all around. Of course, if you want a properly proportioned cab, you can always get the standalone version. Why is it that the two standalone versions we got were for both the legs? Who came up with this idea? Tarantino? 
Again, as far as the alt mode is concerned, the combiner version easily trumps the other. I appreciate the more realistic vehicle proportions, but there's no flair in the sculpt work. There are other problems with the standalone Rampage too, but I'll save that for robot mode. And with that, we move on to Overload, not to be confused with Payload. And in this instance, it's a little bit of a tragic tale. See, poor old Payload never got a proper robot mode in the movie, and consequently, he never got a proper toy outside of the Legends class figure. In many cases, he's omitted from the lineup entirely. I do hope the studio series rectifies this, but we won't know for sure until his listing gets leaked or Hasbro announces him. As of right now, the finalised lineup is still debatable. Regardless, his alt mode isn't that great. It's a rather uninteresting slab with minimal paint and limited play value. I understand that given the size, it wouldn't be viable to make his trailer articulated, or at least I would if this were a normal Legends release. Since this is actually from a box set with a more flexible price range, it's actually a little disappointing. What's more disappointing is how messy he looks from the side. Fake wheels that are out of proportion, scrappy hollow sections, particularly at the back, panel lining that brings back painful memories of classic cyanide. I'm sorry, but this just isn't a good alt mode. I mean, it looks fine from above, and in most cases, given their size, you will be looking at them from a high angle. And sure, he's not as bad as Jazz, but even then, the bed is far too high. In the case of Long Haul, I could forgive it, but this is just a bit too far for me this time. That's unfortunately how it's going to be though. Combining components to become the waste are always going to suffer in some shape or form. It's one of those things where you just have to shake your head and quell your disappointment and say, so be it. Scavenger, aka Demolisher, aka the one who causes so much confusion because Michael Bay hates continuity for some reason, fares slightly better. He's definitely a more solid alt mode overall, however there's a lot of little blemishes here and there. I'm not referring to the wheels being visible from every angle, because that's going to be a given on pretty much every figure, unless they do that horrible rubbery plastic thing or the Studio Series figure pulls some black magic. The sculpting on this thing is actually pretty neat. I love the little touches, such as using the ladders on the side to mask the swivels for transformation, and the neat little touches on the scoop and the treads. Yes, his goatee is visible, but if you didn't know any better, you'd think it was just machinery. I also like how they've minimised the googly eye look that the combining pegs had on the original, as pointed out by few. God, that was a classic review. But that leads me to my main gripe, the white paint. Whenever Hasbro and Takara use white paint apps on a darker colour, they always seem to use this chalky type that looks cheap and chips off incredibly easily. Don't believe me? Here's Takara Legend Scourge. Easily chipped off. He hasn't even been in storage yet and look what happened. As a matter of fact, I've complained about this type of paint before in my Classics Hot Rod review. And once again, all the chalky paint is on display. Like you've got chalky paint here. The yellow's fine, but then you've got the really grey there and the chalky stuff here as well. And the yellow is fine. Honestly, the yellow is just not. Honestly, I'm just thankful that Hasbro has stopped using this paint on their more modern figures, but to this day it seems as if Takara hasn't quite caught the memo. Come on, big powered, don't you dare pull this on us! Regardless, Hightower is fine, I guess? Out of all the bots, he's definitely the one with the least effort put into him, given his rather unconventional robot mode. It's like they said, eh, f*** it, he doesn't have a proper robot mode anyway, so why should we care? That lack of care bleeds into every aspect of this alt mode, just like the purple bleeding through the green paint on the back. Definitely could have used an extra coat. The cab isn't painted on both windows, and it doesn't even go all the way around. And the robot mode faces and the torso isn't even trying to hide at the back there. And the torso section doesn't tab in, so it ends up flopping all over the place. If I had to compare all the figures almost together, this would definitely be the worst. Yes, I'm aware that Legion Legends figures are going to have to make some compromises, especially when they combine, but at the very least, they should try to make it somewhat cohesive. That's one of the things that separates a passable toy from, well, one that fails miserably. And alas, this one does indeed fail miserably. Ah well, maybe he would have turned out better if he wasn't constantly sunbathing at Bondi Beach. It's a sh beach anyway, have some class for God's sake. Well, with the worst out of the way, I guess the only way is up, right? Next up, we have Scrapper. And in spite of several glaring faults, I end up liking him a lot more. Again, the oversized cockpit adds a tongue-in-cheek nature, reminiscent of old Gobot toys, enough to distract me from the fact that the purple shovel looks incredibly out of place. I'm not sure if it's entirely accurate to the vehicle, but the contouring towards the back really tickles my fancy, even if there's a gaping hole from where the hinge works. I love how they've added tiny ladders, and the engine parts help hide the fact that the claws are sticking out of the centre. It's weird, but honestly, it's my favourite vehicle of the set. He even cleans up incredibly well underneath. That's a funny thing, most of these guys clean up well in spite of being Legends toys. This is some serious third party level sh** right here. And finally we have Mixmaster, the Headdomaster! He's okay, just okay. He suffers from a lot of what Overload suffers from, but it's not quite to the same extent, fortunately. He's got a decent amount of detail, but it's nothing special in the grand scheme of things. 
A lot of the details sadly haven't been picked out on the grille at the front, but at least they added a nice helping of purple on the barrel at the back, even if it's a tad messy. The sculpting can get a little bit muddled towards the back thanks to the ball joints, and the truck cab is ridiculously oversized to the point where not even GoBot homages can help it. Fortunately, none of the wheels are fake, and at least he transforms into an actually realistic truck as opposed to whatever the Combiner Wars version did. I'm still incredibly confused. When placed together, they're basically a similar size, given that they're all Legends figures. When you get all of these in the same shot, they give off a certain energy. As a certain skull-faced YouTuber once said, this is a team that cannot look bad in this colour scheme. And in these alt modes, regardless of which lineup they are, if you listen closely, you can hear heavy metal war wafting across the wind. Uh, oh, oh wait, sorry. Actually, that's not the wind, that's my ringtone. Give me a second. Yeah, hello? Oh, thanks. Yep, I'll come and pick it up in a couple of hours. Thank you. Sorry about that, that's just a reminder for my dry cleaning. Anyway, where was I? Ah yes, the transformation. Alrighty then, transformation in the order of how they combine. First up, we have Long Haul. He is quite simple. You undo his legs from here, disconnect them, bring his arms down like so, and then separate them to reveal the robot. You can then bring down the feet. And overall, it's a pretty simple transformation. It's a bit disappointing as well. I mean, the standalone one was a lot more fun and the end result was, well, just a wee bit better in spite of the vehicle modes. Rampage is pretty cool, but he could use a little bit more on the arms, in my personal opinion anyway. The arms open up like this and these just get out of the way. You come around here, untab this whole section here. This bit folds down to get out of the way. It sort of accordions like so. That stays all the way down. Accordions, accordions, accordions. And then you can come around, get the head up, and then you can bring the arms back so that they can tuck into his body or just go out like so or flail around or do whatever you want. Doesn't really matter. And he stands very easily because, well, he is on treads. But I'll get to him later. I'll get to his robot mode later. Okay, so it turns out I completely mistransformed Rampage. He's supposed to go completely differently, and I screwed the whole thing up. Supposedly, these are supposed to stay up, and then it mimics his whip hands. And also, if you take a look at his bottom part here, this just folds all the way up like that. Supposedly the end result is supposed to be far more screen accurate, like so. I'm not gonna lie, I prefer the way I mistransformed it because I'll, well, I'll explain later. But yes, he is supposed to be far more screen accurate, completely invalidating the non-combining version outside of his colours. So that's a thing. Please disregard any information I talk about inaccuracies in this video. Next up, we have Overload. Overload is weird in the sense that it's got some weird kibble that doesn't need to be there. You undo these bits, undo this bit, untab, same here, untab, and then this bit, this kind of just folds down and it's left sticking out of there. Why is that a thing? It's so, so dumb. Regardless, next up we have Scavenger, aka Demolisher, aka whatever. He actually transforms quite cleverly. The only problem is, is that these are on sliding rails, and I hate sliding rails because they can wear down and break very easily. These parts open up. You then unclip the entire alt mode in half. You bring the wheels down, and that allows you to open up the entire robot mode. You can then bring these down to support it. Doesn't matter which way you go, but one of them goes up, one of them goes down, they collapse in and go further, collapse in and go further, these sections fold out, and these sections fold up to form a bit of a backpack. And overall, that is a strikingly accurate robot mode at such a small scale, and I'd say it's a bit better than the Voyager because, you know, it's not going to break apart and it actually stands properly. It's brilliant, I say. Next up we have Hightower. Hightower is very, very disappointing. It has one good step, after you fold this in, and of course you detach these and move them up. Then this entire section accordions in on itself, and that's brilliant, but that's the only cool part. After that it's just down, down, in, and in. And that's another really cool part, but the end result is just boring. And you get 
what should be a really cool thing, I mean these parts are accurate, but this front section is just disappointing. Next up we have Scrapper, who can be a little bit difficult in terms of getting his arms out of his legs, but aside from that it works pretty well. You undo these, you push the head back, you unpeg the arms, and then you sort of wrestle them out from the legs. And then you can bring around the feet and he's ready to go. A very simple but a very effective transformation and a very, very nice robot mode. And finally we have Mixmaster who just doesn't try at all. It's a pretty piss poor transformation but again he's a headmaster so he kind of has to do that. This part folds out, you get the legs separated, you undo these arm sections, you rotate this entire torso section up like so, you then have the head there, these bits clip together, the arms fold down, and then you reorient these parts from the barrel so that they're down like that. From up here, down and around like so. And then you're supposed to use the head as a tripod and eh, it's okay. They're not the best of robot modes, but they do make a very cohesive team. Now yes, these figures definitely have varying degrees of success in their transformation, but considering their size and also how they have to triple change, kudos to the design team for getting something that actually works this close. I suppose I should start off with Long Haul again, and unfortunately he's really suffered in the proportions department. I'm not even sure if this is because of his combining gimmick. It looks like he's just doing the weird meme run that everyone wants to do in Dark Souls and at conventions. Now I do appreciate that the design is pretty clean overall, aside from the incredibly weird arms, but something I cannot forgive is the head design. He looks like a deformed gremlin who's sorry for existing, as opposed to the mighty Decepticon he should be. To be fair though, the standalone toy didn't get the head sculpt right either. Ew. Not as bad, but still bad. Overall though, I still think the standalone version does this design better, probably because he doesn't have to combine. In terms of articulation, his arms move outwards, forwards, and his hips are ball jointed. You could say he has a toe hinge, but it's pretty useless and best ignored. Sometimes you gotta make concessions. Rampage clearly doesn't need any concessions though, as for as weird as he turned out, he's still a blast. Yes, he's technically inaccurate. <laughs> But what we got instead is almost like a Grim Reaper with scoop hands and tank treads for feet. His head sculpt is actually quite menacing, although it does have a hint of spring load in the design. His articulation is also pretty decent. He has ball jointed shoulders, which can be a tad awkward, but can also be worked around. And elbow hinges that get some pretty decent range, and an arcing back with a torso piece that you can readjust to make it feel more natural. I'm not sure if I'm showing it in the footage now, but it actually clicks in and works in tandem. Yes, overall he's inaccurate. <laughs> but comparing him to the standalone version, no contest. I mean, at least he can actually stand. I can see why they changed the design at this scale. I mean, there's not much you can really do with old Pogo Stick. I guess Studio Series did a good job for giving him a stand. Magnus is your uncle, I suppose, or to some daddy. I'm not your daddy! I can't deal with that now. And then we have Overload, the fatty. No paint, no articulation, no sculpt work, no class. I really should hate this guy more than I do, but given my childhood nostalgia, I really can't. See, I wasn't entirely honest when I said I didn't have the Legends version as a kid. I did have a shit KO of it, which strangely enough was also called Hercules, just like the TFC version. It broke pretty quickly though, and that's why I've hunted down a new version. Finally owning this toy and being able to properly combine it prevents me from harping on this figure too much, but trust me, there's not a lot to like here. It's not that there's a lot to hate either, but it's a minimal effort job. The only commendable thing, really, is the head sculpt. It's decent. The figure might have been decent overall if it weren't for the stupid kibble hook on the back. Might as well hang it from the Christmas tree or some shit at this rate. Now I'm filming this at the end of November, and unlike some crazy people, I haven't actually put up the tree yet, because it's way too early. It's nowhere near Christmas yet, and the only reason I'm filming this is just so that it's out on time. But seriously, why are you guys buying all the Christmas trees already? It's bloody ridiculous. Oh, you expected me to do a comedy sketch of me hanging it up on the tree. Well, I obviously can't do that. Articulation is piss poor. The shoulders are fine with ball joints and outward hinges, but in order to compensate for the combined mode, the hips only move outwards. Seems as if once again, every combiner element that becomes a pelvis is destined to be shafted in the articulation process. I swear five bot teams never have to put up with this shit. On a more positive note, Scavenger turns out surprisingly good for his scale. It honestly begs belief how they managed to pull off this monstrosity almost better than the properly sized version. I mean, think about it for a second. 
it's almost entirely accurate, stands up properly, is legend scale, and it combines? It's quite an achievement. The head sculpt is also quite a good likeness, aside from being not mangled. And regardless of how you pose him, even though he only has a swivel and a hinge, he consistently remains standing. The downsides are the hollow sections on the arms, which remain in full view in a neutral position, and the fact that the wheels don't rotate around. But I mean, at this scale and with the combining gimmick, do you really expect it to? Honestly, this guy is an incredible marvel of engineering. I'm really happy with how he turned out. On the other end of the spectrum, apparently I'm not allowed to hate Hightower because it's accurate. Overall, it's an incredibly lazy design, but when compared to the concept art, it's basically on point. The only thing that's a little off are the arms. Am I still allowed to criticize it? It's just not good, but because they're trying to emulate something that wasn't good to begin with, I mean, am I not allowed to criticize it? Eh, who am I kidding? He's a pathetic little runt with zero articulation, zero recognizability, and even less class than Fatty. Now, can we all just move on and hope that the Studio Series version is way more fun? Maybe we don't have to, because next up is easily the best Constructicon of the group, or at least the most humanoid. Scrapper is a lean, mean, clawing machine with belly nipples and ankle tilts to scare you shitless. His arms are a mess of spikes and murder tendencies with menacing claws that back some striking detail. His head sculpt once again pulls from the GoBot stylings, whether intentionally or unintentionally, but he also wears a hoodie, so he must be a villain from a modern Sherlock Holmes incarnation, or a badass rapper who's about to drop some rhymes on you. He's decently articulated with ball joints on the shoulders, hips, and ankles. He could have used a lot more, and with a higher budget, he could have fit a lot more, but again, it's a Legends class figure. The only thing I can really complain about is the waist, which is far too thin. I mean, the way it's sculpted, it makes it look like he's wearing a jacket, or getting ready to perform a pelvic thrust. Out of all the bots that will be remade in Studio Series, Scrapper is the most hype-worthy for me. God, this is going to be an expensive combiner. And that leaves Mixmaster. Pitiful, pitiful Mixmaster. He's not as pitiful as Hightower, especially given how complicated his movie design is, but they really have made some sacrifices here. Now, I don't mind the combined face being used as a tripod leg, and if it's getting in the way, it's fully possible to store it at the back in a slightly more cohesive manner. But damn, these arms are piss poor. He can't even mimic the shields properly. And the sad thing is that given the way he combines, there's no reason for him to be like this. They could have just made the arms regularly ball jointed and it would have been fine. The torso is where he really fails though, because there's hardly any sculpt work and hardly any paint. And to top it all off, the head sculpt makes him seem confused at his own existence. So between this sacrifice attempt and the disaster of a Voyager, I suppose we'll have to wait until next year until we finally get a good version of this. However, does this version have the quintessential feature of all Mixmaster toys? Eh, not, not really. This is the best I could come up with. Regardless of their varying degrees of quality, these guys make a pretty damn good team. Seeing them all together makes me really want to combine Optimus Prime and Jetfire for a fight again. And we haven't even reached the combined mode yet. At the end of the day, we have to keep in mind the size class. In no instances, well, except for maybe high towers, do any of these cross the line into truly being not worth it. You can have these in vehicle mode and back within a few minutes, and it'll always be a blast. Okay, so to finally combine these bad boys, I think it's best to leave Overload, Scavenger, and Rampage in robot mode, whereas the rest will be transformed into vehicle mode. So, if you just give me a second... Okay. Now, totally just ignore the fact that the camera angle changed, because that's totally not because my camera ran out of space mid-filming and I had to start this over again. <laughs> anyway, let's get crumbs out of the way. First off, we'll start off with long haul. First thing you need to do is reveal this hidden backpack assembly. Rotate it up. This entire part folds back. The entire arm section folds in like that. Arm folds fully back. Legs fold fully like that. You got yourself a leg! This guy is pretty simple. The head just folds in. You come around to the back and you make sure the arms fold in like so. Peg together and fold down like that. And you got yourself a pretty nice leg. From here, the fatty comes along. You bring the arms up together like so. Peg them together, but don't bring them up like that because they'll just stay down like that. You get the legs to peg into place. And then you can combine them on these two combiner pegs. Like so. And it forms a nice solid connection. From here, all you need to do is just take this you bring these down into the front. You bring these back into vehicle modes, configuration, and you keep them up like that. It's really that simple. Then he, then you take these two parts here and these two parts here, and it all slides together. At least it should. There we go. 
slid in mostly easily enough. You've also got access to an ab crunch to allow him to hunch over, but I tend to not use it as much. You make sure these are folded in, because they'll accept the arms later. On the topic of the arms, high tower just goes like that. Head and arms pop out, and then he just pegs in. Now, the correct transformation for this is to actually open these up and have it like a claw. However, I tend to prefer it to stay together, and I just egg it in like that. That's just a personal preference of mine. Works just as well. After we bring the camera just a wee bit up, we can finally get this headmaster to go. This guy is dead simple, just like that. And then you open up these. You got two slots here and two tabs here, just slots together. And then these sort of hang back here. They don't really peg into anything. They just act as kibble. And then that just hangs back there. Once again, proving there's no need for that piece. Why is it kibble? It's pointless. But regardless, you have a pretty menacing Devastator. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not Revenge of the Fallen Devastator. One could argue that this thing isn't devastative to begin with, but that's not what we're arguing right now. And one could argue that it's not devastated because of the color scheme, but again, that's not the point. Revenge of the Fallen Devastator doesn't stand upright, nor does it have a face where his wrecking balls should be, and it doesn't look like a snot goblin. Sure, it's not meant to be green anyway, but this design doesn't even look like the Devastator we saw in the movie. However, with all that said, it's still a cracker of a figure. Even at his size, not a state of oozes power and menace. It still manages to bring across the feeling of power, and I guess that's close enough to the original in the sense that it kind of has the proportions of a gorilla. I don't know, I read somewhere in a Kazo magazine as a child that the movements were based on a gorilla's. Weird how they were advertising an M-rated movie in a magazine for kids. Guess money talks. In terms of how clean the robot mode comes across, it's basically a complete mess. But that's kind of the point. Devastator is the antithesis of Infernicus, cobbled together from weird body types of various sizes forced into a hunchback due to the sheer weight of the combiner. Revenge of the Fallen may have been a dumb film, and Devastator may have been a massive letdown, but that will never take away that, as a concept, he is a pure monster. If I had to complain about a few things, it would be the paint and the articulation. Overall, he could have used a little more paint, and the dry brushing on the face doesn't look that great. It would have been better to paint it properly, and as for the posability, he's a bit of a brick. The head is on a ball joint that gets some upward movement, but it's basically just a swivel at this point. Still more articulation than the Supreme version, though. Also, don't forget the ab crunch that doesn't really do anything. The arms are a bit better with the same joints as Scavenger, and due to the type of pegs used, they've got a bicep swivel. Each claw is articulated in a minor way, however, as I said earlier, I prefer to leave Scrapper in his car form, as the separated claw looks messy and not in the same sense that the rest of the figure is. The legs are unfortunately pretty static though, with swivels and, well, that's about it. No knees, no ankles, no nothing. I mean, you can sort of cheat a quadrupedal form by mistransforming the legs, but then the head looks all wrong and it's not really worth it. Size-wise, this guy's about the size of a small deluxe by yesteryear's standards, and a regular deluxe by today's. He also retailed for just above the price of a deluxe back then, if memory serves me correct. So you really get your bang for your buck here. And I mean, at the end of the day, he still makes a good desk toy, or a display piece, or a funny hat. So I suppose the question is, is he better than Hulky? You know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say yes, simply because of the price. A figure should be able to fill its price point through fun factor and engineering, and unfortunately Hulky doesn't fill in that $200, $300 price tag. At the Voyager size, he's simply lacking in way too much articulation. But this thing was priced slightly above a deluxe, and if you consider all the moving parts and the genius engineering, in spite of the somewhat flawed robot modes, it definitely fills that price range. Not to mention that said price point is only a fraction of Hulky's price, and they did it with more robots. For what it does, and given the limits of the budget, it does a far better job at being a fun toy. Hulky just isn't fun. I'd sooner purchase another one of these before even thinking about getting another DX9 Legends combiner, and given how we don't know what's going to happen with Predator King, I think it's a safe bet. Not to mention that the Takara Movie Advanced one looks ever so dreamy. No, Mikey, you can't have my other copy once I get that. But until the Studio Series 1 comes out, I'm going to enjoy this toy just fine.
And as for tomorrow, well, I'm going back to the smaller, less intense marathon videos going along with Megatron from the Generations line. Of course, I've still got four more full reviews this month, and I hope you'll check them out. But until then, see you tomorrow. How many more do you think? Maybe two more. Yeah, yeah. I'll go for more of an exaggerated one. Yeah, my, uh, I think maybe the what the like what the hell are you wearing? Not what the hell are you wearing? Yeah, yeah. I I'll go more aggressive for that. Yeah. 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 So many buses. So many buses on a busy weekend day. Weekday. Weekend.